Exodus 40. We are back to the story. What was the story? I mean, it involved everyone worshiping God, I think. Maybe. I didn't say it was a good story. But before we can continue, Moses needs to set up the tabernacle that just got built. It is the least climactic way to end a book of the Bible. Then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, on the first day of the first month. Place the Ark of the Covenant law in it, and shield the Ark with the curtain. Bring in the table, and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand, and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant law, and put the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. I really think these Israelites are gonna snap at some point. They just did everything God wanted, perfectly. And what does God do? Just gives them more instructions. There's no praise, no job well done, not even a gold star. God's practically encouraging procrastination next time since there's no reward for finishing the work. Give them a day off. Give them some overtime pay or something. Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar and it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate them. Imagine making a tabernacle so ornate with linens and gems and everything, only to find out you still need to pour some oil on it or else it's just totally worthless. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments, anoint him, and consecrate him so he may serve me as priest. Bring his sons and dress them in tunics. Anoint them, just as you anointed their father, so they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue throughout their generations. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. A priesthood that continues for generations. That sounds like a curse. Who the hell would want to worship a picky, greedy god like this dude for generations? These are not lucky people. They are in the bad place. And why is Aaron's lineage getting rewarded? Aaron was the guy who made the golden calf. He should be punished, but he's being rewarded for generations to come. Seems weird. Then again, Christians have a habit of propping up the worst people. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put the bases in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbars, and set up the posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent, as the Lord commanded him. They set it up in the second year. They left Egypt more than a year ago and have spent all this time just wandering in the desert, listening to God dictating instructions, and building things on God's behalf. I cannot believe nobody exodus earlier. How many of these guys are thinking, we were better off as slaves to the Egyptians? He took the tablets of the covenant law and placed them in the ark, attached the poles to the ark, and put the atonement cover over it. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle and hung the shielding curtain and shielded the ark of the covenant law, as the Lord commanded him. I still want to know what's written on those tablets, because these are not the original Ten Commandments. It's the list that includes not cooking a young goat in its mother's milk. Anyway, Moses now needs to do some interior decorating, so let's just whip through this. Moses placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the curtain, and set out the bread on it before the Lord, as the Lord commanded him. 
he placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain and burned fragrant incense on it, as the Lord commanded him. Then he put up the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering near the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and grain offerings, as the Lord commanded him. He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, and Moses and Aaron and his sons used it to wash their hands and feet. They washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then. Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. The Lord is so damn bossy. We are so lucky that God is nowhere to be found in the world because if he was around, we'd get so sick of him. Why is Moses doing all this work? I thought he had minions everywhere. The whole point of being Moses is that you're leading these people. Get them to move the furniture around. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out, until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. Because when you think of glory, you think of clouds. And when you think of fire, you think of clouds. Okay, let me get this straight. These people can't travel when the cloud is settled upon the tent. But the cloud never seems to leave, which means they can't really move. Sucks to be them. God just trapped them all in a holy loophole. We. I can't believe we just spent chapters working up to this moment, and all they made was a mobile home for God. I'm not knocking mobile homes, but you would have thought they spent chapters making a permanent mansion. Here's the interesting thing about this ending, because we are at the end of Exodus. It sounds like we're done making things, and setting up the things, and ready to keep traveling, so the next book should be all about those travels. But it won't be. The travels will continue in Book 4, the Book of Numbers, because first, we need to get even more rules from God in Book 3, the Book of Leviticus. You thought the second half of Exodus was pointless? Just wait until both halves of Leviticus. But at least we'll have a lot of stuff to mock.